Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. I also want to buttress the fact that God is very unorthodox. In Numbers 21, there was an ailment. People were beaten by snakes. I don't know whether they saw the snakes or they were not sitting in the city or seeing the snakes. But the children of Israel were beaten by snakes and they were dying. And they ran to God and said, what do we do? Now, this looks strange. God said to Moses, take a serpent, a brazen serpent, put it on a pole and lift it high. Now, I thought it would say whoever touches or talks. No, he said, whoever looks at that serpent that is beaten by a snake shall be healed. Many times, what people are thinking that will come from God to heal the pandemic racing is not, most of the time, it's not going to come that way you're thinking. Now, God said, whoever, and some didn't look at the serpent because it looked stupid, and they died. And all that looked at the brass serpent, the Bible says they were all healed. I remember the story of a young man, 26 year of, uh, years of age, very sad story. He was diagnosed with cancer of the colon. And I called him and I said, young man, I want you to submit yourself to medical procedure. And I will pray along with you and you'll be well. He said, by me stripes I'm healed. I don't need any drug. I don't need any doctor. I said, if I see faith a million miles away, I will know. I was taught faith by God with over 15 visitations by the Lord Jesus teaching me faith. If I see unbelief a million miles, even if I hear a voice, I can pick unbelief in it without even seeing the person. I said, you're walking in unbelief. He said, no, for it is written. He was quoting scriptures, 26 years old. I called him again. He didn't answer me. He died months later. The only son of his mother was a very pathetic case. I don't know what he was hearing, that he couldn't submit himself to medical procedure. We have testimonies of people who submitted themselves to medical procedures. Stage four cancer, perfectly well, perfectly healed. With, you know, when they submit themselves to medical procedure, we have a medical report. It's with, some of them are with me. I have them to authenticate those testimonies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 20, and this is what people must understand. Praise the Lord. In 2 Kings 20, for verse 1, I read. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. The sickness was unto death. That means he was going to die. The prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him. And said to him, Thus saith the Lord, listen to this, this is the word of God. Set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. You know, when someone said thou shalt die, it is emphatic enough that you, that person is going to die. Then he now further said, and not live. That means he's, he's emphasizing it again that this man will die and not live. That means either way, if you look at live, he will not live. If you look at die, he will die. So there's no escape route. Then Ezekiel turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiel wept so. It came to pass, while Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayers, I have seen their tears, behold, I will heal thee. Now, I, I, I want to emphasize this. God said to Ezekiah, I will heal thee. This is very important. God said, I will heal. Now, the verse 1 said it was sick unto death. Now, God is sending his prophet, said, I will heal thee. And what I expect is the angel of God to appear with a white rod with fire, touch his head, warm, he collapses on the floor, he stands and is healed. But that's not what happened. 
I will hit thee. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord. Verse 6. I will add unto thy days fifteen years. I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend the city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Verse 7. Then Isaiah said to him, Take a lump of figs. Oh, oh, that's medicine. Took it, boil it, and they administered to him and he recovered. Now, God said, I will heal you, Hezekiah. You are sick unto them. I'm going to heal you. Now, Isaiah now took figs, lumps of figs. These are leaves, branches, the back of trees. They boiled it into a medicinal portion and gave it to Hezekiah to take and he was healed. Many times, when God says, I will heal you. Now, there's even a pattern I want you to understand with God. He told Gideon in Judges 7 or so, he said, you are a mighty man of valor. He was not a mighty man of valor. He went through procedures. He went through procedures. He broke his father's altar. He did a lot of things to become a mighty man of valor. He told Abraham, you are father of many nations. Abraham went through procedures, had a sexual relationship with his wife to become a father of many nations. So the fact that God says something doesn't mean it's just going to happen automatically. Many times there are procedures to follow to actualize what God has said. God said to Ezekiah, I will heal you. But a procedure took place where figs were boiled and he took it, then he was healed. But God didn't say that when he said, I will heal you. Isaiah now administered that to him. Now, if it was somebody that didn't understand spiritual things, he said, God said, I will heal me, so I am healed by his stripes, I am healed. And he might even drop dead. I've seen many, I've been to many people and say, but God said he was going to heal. Why did my son die? There was no person to administer the procedure and save that son. At that time, I didn't have an answer. I didn't know what to say. I said, well, like everybody will say, the Lord blessed, the Lord took, which of course we all know is very wrong. So in this situation, there was a procedure, though God pronounced healing. And that further buttresses the fact that God can say you are healed and you still have to subject yourself to medical procedure to actualize the healing. I want to give a few testimonies. Um, there was a sister, she was pregnant, and she had what we call placenta previa. Um, it was then I understood what placenta previa was, because they said, when you have placenta previa, you're bleeding. I don't know, but they said she, they're supposed to be bleeding. Most of those who had placenta previa that we saw then, they were in hospital throughout, they were bleeding. But when she got pregnant, we took time to pray. We dragged God on the scene. And when we put God on the scene, she didn't bleed. And she, the baby was breached. She told me, she said, I don't want CS. I want number delivery. I said, no, I'm not going to do that with you. I'm going to ask you to submit yourself to whatever this consultant says. If he says the CS, the CS is going to be successful. When it was time for her to do, she did, um, is the antenatal was close by. I guess they, they just didn't see that she had placenta previa. I was with her on that day. I, no, I was sent for. I was on the island. She was in a hospital then in a um, Guinean hospital. And the doctor said, she has placenta previa. This is a time bomb. <laughs> they sent for me and I got there. And the consultant said, you didn't bleed? She said, no. In fact, I'm just coming from the market. He said, what? You are coming from the market on a bike? Then they had not banned the bike. And you're not bleeding? They said, no. God was on the scene. She was going for her tenator. She was going for everything. They said, today, they're going to put her down in the hospital. I had to come and plead, intercede. Please let her go home. Her bag is not here. Nothing is here. The home is not in order. Which, more please, I knew the medical director then. He said, okay, I will give you one hour. Let her go and return. Of course, she quickly went. She was a fashion designer, completed some clothes, submitted them to people, cooked and did everything. She returned. When she returned and it was time for her to deliver, she was to go through a cesarean session and she was scheduled for 7 a.m. She called me by 4 p.m. that all the doctors are running from her. They said that uh, 
They are running his placenta previa. Nobody wants to do the CS. I said, wow, what's going on? The doctor that called her the time bomb was the one that went to persuade his colleagues. He said, no, this lady's case is special. It's different. We've not seen this type before. Operator, they asked her to bring two pints of blood because they believe there's going to be a lot of loss of blood. They didn't use one out of it. She had a successful delivery. At the third day we visited her in the hospital, she was looking stronger and healthier than people that even came to visit her. That is medical procedure with God involved. I'll tell you another case. It's an elderly woman. She was sick. They took her to a doctor and he said, no, this is serious. She had to do a scan. They did the scan and found out that she had stage 4B cancer of the colon. All the results are with me. The records are there. So he referred her to a cancer specialist uh, on the mainland who came examine her and said, this is stage 4B cancer. It's spreading fast. They have to operate her. She came to meet me. I said, don't worry. This is what you need to do to drag God into the scene. She did what I asked her to do. And we know God came on the scene. She had a five and a half hour surgery. Five and a half hour surgery to remove the cancer. After the surgery, she was placed on chemotherapy drugs about three sessions. I think each session was about three weeks. I can't remember, or six weeks. I can't remember. Went through the sessions, went through the sessions. About just a few months back, the doctor asked her to do another thorough test, scans and everything. She did the scans and did the test, and we showed the cancer specialist the result. He looked at it and said, this woman is perfect. Perfect, as healthy as any young lady you can imagine. He said she's so perfect that she's perfect, perfect. Many people have died with cancer in stage 2. She was stage 4B. From my understanding with cancer, the last stage is 4D. All stage 4 cancers are I don't know what to call it. I won't call it whatever. But they are not pleasantries at all. People are afraid of cancer. Just bring God on the scene. Use your drugs. Bring God on the scene. Use the procedures. Bring God on the scene. God works with medicine. I'll tell you another testimony about a nurse in a major hospital here in, in Lagos, major government hospital. She's a nurse. They had a patient who had Lassa fever. I guess initially they were not aware he had Lassa fever, but after tests, they knew he had Lassa fever. But by that time, it was late. Four of the medical personnel had contacted Lassa fever. Then the husband called me. At the time the husband called me, she had started bleeding in the nose, in the ear, and in the mouth. That means it was advanced. So he called me. Now the husband, he doesn't go straight to the point when he calls you on the phone. Eh, pastor, eh, there's a case. I said, go straight to the point. Eh, my wife is sick. She has a kind of fever. As I said, fever, I said, stop right there. Tell her to take this drug in the name of the Lord Jesus. She shall be well. I said, no, pastor, you don't understand what I'm saying. I said, now nah, that was a conversation going on. He was trying to explain to me that it is Lassa fever, not normal fever. I, I, I just told her, now, nah, I'm not abusing medical procedure, but I always believe the most standard tropical um, ailment we have in the part of the world is malaria fever. And I said, look, let's treat it for malaria fever. So I just said, take this drug. It's a WHO drug. It's quite safe. They even use it for pregnant women now in their first trimester. It's quite safe, very good. Take this drug. He was still trying to, I said, take the drug in the name of Jesus. She'll be well. She took the drug. She had Lassa fever. Out of four of them, two died. And only two of them survived. She said that she took the drug miraculously. She survived. She was quarantined at the hospital for seven days. They kept running tests, running tests. First, they ran the test, was positive. That's when they called me. And they kept running the test. Lassa fever was healed. Why? The drug used, God was involved. It was a coronavirus. That's how she would have been healed. Why? Because we will bring God into the situation. Many testimonies, if I go on and on, there are a few cases where medicine was helpless. We had a case of a young girl, about four months old. 
She was diagnosed with a hole in the heart. It was really bad. And we had to actually contribute money to send her to India for a heart surgery. When they got to India, they said she developed what they call pulmonary hypertension and she could no longer be cured. I remember I spoke with the doctor on the phone and from my understanding, they gave her three to six months to leave. They gave them some drugs when they came from India and said if she takes these drugs, she has a six months window to leave. If she does not take the drug, she has about three months window to leave. So the father brought, the, the mother brought the child and the father called me one day, he said, Pastor, I said, what? He said, I threw all the drugs into the dustbin. I said, what? He said, I thought about it. If I use the drugs three months, uh, six months, she will leave and then die. If I don't use the drugs three months, she will leave and then die. Either way, it dies, so I'm just going to trust God. Medicine is helpless in this situation. There are cases where medicine is helpless. They are yet to find a cure. And in that instance, you have to go for Brooks and trust God all the way. The girl is still alive. She's about 12 years old now. In school, doing well. I remember once, the only time they've ever called me, she was sick. She had malaria. We they treated her for malaria. She's fine. She's doing well. She does all activities well. She is perfectly. Whether the hole is still there, I don't know. Whether it's no longer there, I don't know. But we trusted God. And we have few cases like that. But where there is a medical procedure to get you your healing, please I advise you, as we have seen in the case of Hezekiah, even if God has told you you're going to be well, submit yourself to that procedure. God is the first in all medical practices you can ever think of or imagine. Whether they're neurologists, whether they're pediatricians, whether they're gynecologists, whether they're anesthetists, God is the first He inspired them to get. And that's why you go to most hospitals, they say, God heals, we care. God heals, they acknowledge, just we care. And that's how it is. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Kuru Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Now, for Christians who go to church and take communion, we call it the Lord's Supper, some call it the Eucharist, different churches, all Christians understand what we call the communion. Here on the, I just want to show you this illustration. In this plate, I have a biscuit here, and in this cup, I have a water in it. Now, normally, if you take this biscuit and drink this water, they don't give you much nutritional value. Well, water gives a lot of nutritional, uh, not nutritional, it gives a lot of health benefits, but it still has its limitation. This biscuit, even doctors will tell you at my age, I shouldn't be taking biscuit. I remember once, twice, the Lord Jesus appeared to me once. When he appeared, he was wearing white, white like a gown, wore a sander. And I looked at him and said, wow, Lord, what is it? I thought it was going to tell me that the trumpet is about to sound. Angels are flying. You're not going to go to the ends of the earth. Raise all the dead that have died from like six months. Guess what he said? He said, I've come to instruct you. Keep your weight under this figure. I said, oh, Lord, you left heaven to come and tell me. He said, keep your weight under this figure. I thought I could weigh anything and I just declare and confess that the spirit of God gives life to my mortal body. Say, let the weak say I'm strong, I'm strong in the name of... No, there are procedures for those words to come to pass. The second time he appeared to me, I said, this time around, the Lord is going to talk to me about Nigeria, about Africa, about the move of God. He said... I've come to instruct you, and that's for me. That's for me. I don't know whether I should say because people can misinterpret so many things. 
He said, cut down on sugar and red meat. I said, what? Here is the Lord Jesus in glory appearing to me and I'm expecting to hear words like from now on when you wave your finger lightning will move from east to west when you wave your palm thunder will rise I thought that was what was coming to tell me he said cut down he didn't say don't eat it he said cut down on it and if you look at nutritional biochemistry for my age I should cut down on sugar and red meat because my metabolic rate can be like someone of about 20 it's not the same and those two appearances marveled me the Lord is concerned about the physiology and the biochemistry of our mortal body now like I said earlier this is biscuit now if I eat it I've just eaten biscuit and if I drink this water I like to take a sip I just drank water at the communion the priest or the reverend father or the bishop or the pastor or the vicar takes this same biscuit bread or whatever you call it and this is what he does he raises it to heaven if you remember the lord's supper it was bread the lord took and wine he raises it to heaven and makes pronouncement on it he prays to God and makes a pronouncement on it. And to those who believe in the communion, if I do that same thing, this biscuit becomes the body of Jesus. This water becomes the blood of Jesus. It has not changed in its physical composition, but the ability of what it will do in my body transcends what biscuit and water will do. It can heal. It can bring me spiritual benefits health benefits, physiological benefits, and all manner of benefits. Its benefits is phenomenal. It's beyond human comprehension. What is the difference? The biscuit has not changed. The water has not changed. What I pronounced on it is what makes the difference. That is how your drugs are like. He said in Exodus 23, 25, he said, I will bless your bread. I will bless your water. Now, bread and water cannot take sickness. Say that will take sickness away from your miss. Bread and water cannot take sickness away from you. No, it's not going to. But when it is blessed, the water and the bread will take sickness away from you. The book of Jeremiah chapter 46. And I read from verse 11. Go up to Gilead. And take balm, that's a healing cream. O virgin, the daughters of Egypt, in vain shall thou use many medicine, for thou shalt not be cured. Now God is saying, use the balm, use the medicine, you not be cured. You know why? He's not involved. And God is giving me a message to every mankind. Whether it's a pandemic, corona, whatever you call it, anything, if you're in a hospital, you're quarantined and you're being treated for coronavirus, plead with the physician to give you one minute just to bring God on that drug they're giving you, just to bring God on that drip or whatever they're putting, that UV they're passing through you. Bring God in it. Once God gets into it, he said the medicine and the balm will not cure. Yet, it cured Hezekiah. It cured other people. The difference is there is no faith. Where there is no faith, it will not work. Where there is faith, it will work. Now, you may say, I don't know what to pronounce on my drugs. I don't know what to say. The doctor may know what to say. The pharmacist may know what to involve in the prescription. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a pharmacist. I will just prescribe drugs to use. How do I bring God into it? Very simple prayer. The Bible says he took the bread and gave thanks. Take your drug. And give thanks to God and say, thank you, Father, for providing leave for medicine and medication for my use. Bless this, whatever it is, as an antibiotic or whatever you call it. Bless, I don't want to mention antibiotic, so I don't, I'm not going to be quoted. Praise God. Bless this drug, mention the name. Bless the water. You have to bless the water you're going to use to take it. If it's going to go into your veins and it's an injection, 
Bless this injection, Lord. Bless it as it enters my body. Let it minister grace and let it bring glory to your holy name. You must pray it in the name of Jesus. This is specific instruction from God. You must pray that prayer in the name. It doesn't take three minutes. Don't, if it's 30 minutes, you're still praying. You've prayed wrongly. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Take note. The only begotten Son of God. I lay emphasis on that. That is the instruction from God. It doesn't even have to be coronavirus. People are going through different ailments. People are going through different treatments. Some are like this person in Jeremiah 46. They've been using medicine. It has not worked. Used another medicine. It has not worked. Make a difference now this time. The next drug you will use, if it's past morning and you have to take it in the night, when you're about to take it in the night, leave those drugs up to God. Ask God to bless it. Ask him to sanctify it. And ask him to add grace upon it. In the name of Jesus, not Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ. Please be specific. Jesus the Christ, the only begotten Son of the Most High God. God said to tell you, you will be healed. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information or how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.